Okay, throughout this video, I'm gonna ask you to calculate the number of golf balls that are on this table. So I'm gonna go ahead and count how many golf balls there are to start. Great. Okay, so we have 12 golf balls on the table. Um, I'm gonna change a few things around and see if we can calculate uh, the number on the table after I change it. Okay, so we've got some golf balls moved around, but let's go ahead and see if we can count the number of golf balls we have in total. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. If we go into here, we got seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven and twelve. So we're starting to see a pattern that the total number of golf balls on the table is always equal to twelve. Let's go ahead and switch some things up and see if we can count them again. Okay, so how many golf balls on the table now? And if you said eight, you would be correct as we search around. We notice that there's not any more on the table that we can see, but there are four over in this box off the table. So we've removed four from the table, and so we'd have to put those back on to fit our pattern of 12 golf balls always being on the table. That was not true for a moment because we let four leave the table. Okay, let's try another round. Okay, so how many golf balls can you see on the table now? And yes, yeah, so if we count all these up, we'll see we have 16 golf balls on the table. And that breaks our rule that we said that it should always be 12. But if you look over here, we've got a box full of golf balls. So if we allow golf balls to enter the table or leave the table, then we can't really hold this statement true that there's always 12 golf balls on the table. But we want that statement to be true. So we're going to add some things to our statement and say, the total number of golf balls on the table always equals 12 if no golf balls enter or leave the table. Okay, so we've got our 12 golf balls back on the table. We're gonna look at some new changes that we're going to do on the table. But before we do that, I'm going to give you guys a chance to look around and check these two things that are on the table. I'm just going to let you make a couple observations about this box. And there's the mass of the box. And I'm going to let you look at this water here. And there's what the water's doing. So these are two things that have been on our table that haven't been in play yet. We're going to see if we can try to figure out how many golf balls are still on the table after I do some changes. All right, so we ask ourselves, how many golf balls can we see on the table? Well, we can see 10, but let's see if we can make some more observations. Here's our mass of this box, and here's the water level over here. So what do you notice? And yes, so what we notice is that the mass of this box went up. So we only see 10 golf balls, but we can kind of infer that there must be something going on inside this box. Maybe some of these golf balls have gone inside this box. And that seems like a pretty uh, reliable statement because we have our mass that went up um, on the scale. We're gonna change things up again and see if we can do some calculations. All right, now we have a number of golf balls on the table. Let's count the ones we can see. And let's go check the scale again. Now we see we have a changed number on here. We can see 11 golf balls, and we've noticed that our mass has changed from the previous example. My question is you, for you is can you go ahead and calculate what you think the mass of one golf ball might be? All right, so you should have calculated that the mass of one golf ball was about 45 to 46 grams because we went from 179, 180 grams down to 134. We can only see 11, so we're guessing that one golf ball is in there. Remember our original mass of the box was just 88 grams. Okay, so now that we've calculated the mass of one of these golf balls, there's a new way that we can kind of think about recognizing where golf balls are on the table. The value of that 12 that we started out with is now part of an equation. The value of the 12 equals the number of golf balls seen. So when it was 12, we could see 12. But now we have to add a new term in there and say that it's not just the golf balls we can see, but it's also the golf balls in the box. And we can calculate that number from the scale. 
Okay, we're gonna do another change here and see if we can figure some stuff out about the golf balls on the table. Okay, so the number of golf balls we can see on the table is just equal to two. Let's go ahead and see if we can do some investigation. What do you notice about the scale? Right, so we know that there can't be any golf balls in there because that 88 grams is the original mass of the, of the box. So no golf balls are hidden in there. If we go down here though, what do you notice about the water level? And yes, the water level has risen. It was at a zero before, now we're up between one and two on the water level. So if we spend some time doing a little bit of calculations, we could probably figure out how much the water level would rise every time a golf ball was added in there. So now we need to add this new term into our equation that the value of the 12 equals the number of golf balls seen plus the number of golf balls in the box calculated from the scale and now the number of golf balls that we can calculate from the water level. So the number of golf balls that are in the water. So we've started to see a couple different ways that we can see the golf balls. And when I say see, we don't actually have to see them physically, but we can calculate where they might be by using other measurements like the mass on a scale or the water level in the bucket. So we're gonna go ahead and analyze a couple of these things and see if we can relate this back to some physics terms. Okay, so now let's apply some physics terms and make some sense of this whole golf ball counting craziness. Let's first look at the table. The table is where we looked for this entire experiment and counted the number of golf balls. When we pick a place or a location or things that we're going to focus on when we're studying something, we call that a system. And the system is the place or things that you are studying. You just simplify it. Instead of saying the entire classroom, we're going to say we're going to focus on the table. Then after I was moving golf balls on and off the table, we came up with this idea that to make things simpler, we should say that no golf balls can enter or leave the table. And in physics, we're going to call a system that things are not allowed to enter or leave a fixed system. So we created a fixed system on our table so that we knew that the golf balls could not enter or leave the table at any time. So what do the golf balls stand for? What do the golf balls represent in this example? Well, the golf balls actually represent an amount of energy. So by bringing golf balls on the table, we were adding energy to our system. By taking them off the table, we were removing energy from our system. When we fix that system, we can say, we're going to keep the amount of energy that's on the table always the same number, or always the same amount. OK, then we had these three different ways we could quote unquote find golf balls. At first, it seemed like the only way we could count them was just by having to see them and count them. But then we realized, well, if the table's fixed and nothing can leave, they have to be somewhere on the table. And we used a little bit of observation to figure out we can calculate the number of golf balls that are in a box by looking at the number on the scale. We also figured out we can calculate the number of golf balls that are in the water by looking at how much the water level rose. These different ways of finding the golf balls, which represent the energy, um, just give us an example of how energy comes in a bunch of different ways. We're going to call those different ways different flavors. And we're going to choose the word flavors for this because most of the time energy is said that it changes its forms. But we're going to stay away from saying the word forms because that gives us the idea that it's changing into something else. Notice the golf balls always remained golf balls. There was just different ways of finding out where they were stored or where they were hidden. The same thing is true about energy. Energy is always energy. It's just represented by different flavors that, that we can have. So we're going to use this uh, to guide our understanding of energy. So in conclusion, we're going to piece this all together. So we're going to say the total number of golf balls, we're going to replace that with the amount of energy, the total amount of energy. We're going to replace the table with a fixed system. And to say it equals 12 is 12 is arbitrary. It just is the point that 
it's always going to remain the same. So that first sentence is the total amount of energy in a fixed system always remains the same. All of this on the bottom of the screen is going to get reduced to energies represented by a variety of flavors. There's different ways that we can find how energy is stored. So we'll put that into a nice neat sentence here. In conclusion, the total amount of energy in a fixed system remains the same, and energy is represented by a variety of different flavors.